This one is jet black. It's meant to be darker, but is it really? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be comparing two RIT all-purpose dyes. So I'm going to be comparing the black to the jet black right here. So these are both black, but obviously this one is jet black. It's meant to be darker, but is it really? So this one right here, the black, you could get it by itself just the dye itself or it even comes in powder form but this one right here the jet black this one you cannot get just the bottle itself like just the dye this one it comes in a kit which is this one right here the red back to black kit so this kit right here comes with the dye some gloves and then this color stay dye fixative so this kit right here is meant to make your clothes darker if you want to make them like super super black so that's why i was curious i was like is this jet black even darker than the regular black so that's exactly what this video is going to be about because i've been curious about it because i did try out this kit last year and i didn't get the results that i wanted that's why i was like does this even make your clothes super dark because i dyed some red pants and they ended up becoming like a really dark like burgundy brown so I was like is it even dark so I'm curious to see if this one is actually super dark in comparison to this one because I think it kind of sucks that you can't get this one by itself you know in case you want to make something like super super dark you do have to get it in the kit so we shall see if there's even a difference when it comes to these two and if the kit is worth it so if you're curious to see how these compare then let's get started starting off I'm taking a white cotton t-shirt and I'm cutting it down the middle that way I don't waste two t-shirts and here are the dyes, the black and the jet black. And always make sure to give your dyes a good shake before using. Then I'm taking two of the same measuring cups and just pouring some dye. Honestly, I didn't know how much dye to use, so I'm using half a cup for half a shirt. Then I got two plastic buckets and I'm pouring some hot water onto them. I heated up this water in the stove because I wanted it to be like actual hot temperature. So I'm just pouring them in. They're not the same size bucket, but I tried to get them as even as possible. Then I went ahead and poured my dye. On the left we have black and on the right we have jet black. And here is a freeze frame. Not sure if this makes a difference, but can you see how on the black it's a little bit more of a watery consistency in comparison to the jet black. That one, like the dye just straight up stayed there. It didn't dissolve like the black one did. So we'll see if this makes a difference. And then the instructions said to add some dish detergent. So I just went ahead and poured some palmolive soap in there. Not exactly a measurement. I just, you know, poured it in there as evenly as possible. They also said to pour in some salt. So I just did one tablespoon of salt. Then I just took some metal spoons and made sure everything was mixed really well and ready to go. And as you can see here, just a little observation, can you see how the jet black has more of like a cyclone going on in comparison to the black? I feel like it's the soap part of it, but who knows? I don't think this is even going to cause an issue, just wanted to point it out. Then I went ahead and wet my shirts before placing each one into a dye bath. Then I got the metal spoons and just made sure everything was dunked under the dye bath and nothing was peeking out. So here I am just continuously stirring it and stirring it. And here they are after just being put into the dye. As you can see, the black side has more of like a purple tone to it in comparison to the jet black, which has more of like a blue tone to it. We'll see if that changes, but in the meantime, you could straight up tell there's a difference. So let's just continue to stir this. And here it is after five minutes of continuously stirring it. As you can see, the tones pretty much went away because now they're looking pretty evenly. There's not much of a difference. Like they're both dark, look like the same tone. So let's just continue to stir it. And here we have after 10 minutes, once again, still looking pretty the same. So let's just continue it. Here it is 20 minutes after, still the same tone, looking black, no bluish or purplish tone. So let's keep on going. Here we have the 30 minute mark, clearly still looking dark, still looking the same tone. So, so far so good. So let's continue to the full on hour. And here we have it after 60 minutes, pretty much looking identical. There's no blue tone, there's no purple tone. So now it's time to take it out. And now before washing those, I'm taking two different buckets and I'm pouring hot water onto them as well. Once again, these are different shapes, but I'm trying to get them as even as possible. So I'm just filling them up with water. And I wanted to try this color stay dye fixative to see if it actually helps with the bleeding and see if it works. So I'm just giving it a shake and then I'm taking the same measuring cups. Obviously they're clean now and I'm pouring half a cup for each side. Then I'm taking the metal spoons and just making sure everything is mixed really well in there. Then I'm carefully getting the dyed shirts and putting each into one of the buckets. Then I'm taking the same metal spoon and just continuously stirring. So for this fixative, it says to leave it for 20 minutes. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave it for 20 minutes and then just continue to stir and stir. 
and here they are after they're done pretty much still looking the same so now we're just gonna take them out and take them to the sink and for this rinse it with cold water so that's what I'm gonna do rinse them with cold water and surprisingly as you can see there was no bleeding which usually never happens because I never use a fixative so the fact that there's no bleeding is such a trip because I'm not used to that you know so I'm here to say that I think the fixative does work because look on the jet black or the black there was no bleeding so that's definitely super impressive so once the water runs clear just go ahead throw it into the wash add a little bit of detergent just set it to start let it air dry and since I did cut my shirt in half I decided to sew it back together that way I could see what these look like side by side and here it is after it's been sewn this side right here is black and this side right here is jet black can you tell the difference? I hope you can catch it on camera, but looking at it side by side, there's definitely a slight difference. The black right here has more of like a purple tone to it in comparison to this one, which has more of like a true black tone to it. So they're both still black, they're both still dark, but it's like different shades when they're like right next to each other. Because if you were to just look at the black side by itself, you could straight up tell like, oh, it's black. Like you can't even tell it has that purple tone to it because you're not comparing it to anything. And then the jet black as well, you look at it, you just see it straight up black. But now next to each other, that's when you can tell there's a difference. So I hope you can catch it on camera, but yeah, slightly difference still black but just a different tone of black and clearly the stitching is polyester because look it did not dye at all but yeah they're both dark both black just with slightly different hues and here we have the shirt once again we have the black and the jet black Honestly, these results really surprised me because for some reason I thought the jet black was going to be like super duper dark in comparison to the black. But I feel like the only thing that changed was like the tone of it. This one, like I mentioned, has more of like a purple tone in comparison to this one that's more of like a flat black. I will say this one right here does give me more of that like faded black look. You know when you have a shirt after like so long when you first got it, it was like black. But then slowly after time it starts getting like less black and less black. I feel like this one is that. Like it's still black but it's not as black as this one right here. But overall I really thought this one was going to be like completely super dark in comparison to this one but obviously not and I did want to show you with an actual black shirt how it looks so these right here are obviously the dyed ones and then we have this regular black gildan so let's see it can you see there's actually a difference so this one right here I hope it's catching it on camera but this one is just straight up black and obviously the tone of the black right here it stands out way more this one looks way more faded it's not as black as this one and then the jet black obviously there's still a difference this one looks like a faded version of this one right here so there's definitely a difference to an actual black shirt but the test of this video was to try out the dyes themselves in case you needed to dye something so these right here this is how it ended up on a white cotton t-shirt but keep in mind the results for whatever it is that you're dyeing will be different depending on how much dye you use how much water you use what color the garment is to begin with so always keep that in mind and I did want to mention thinking about how much dye you use does make a difference because this is actually my second attempt at doing this little test the first time that I did it the results were not what I was expecting I did not use enough dye and let me show you how they turned out. So this right here is the black version. Look at it. This is straight up gray, dude. So I don't know how much dye I use, but they say if you want your item to be dark, use more dye. So when you want to go dark, make sure to like double in whatever it is dye that you're using. Because if not, and you use too much water, this is what's going to happen. So this was the black. And look at this is straight up gray. And now for the jet black, this is how that one turned out. Look at it. It's not even black either. This is like dark gray as well. So I failed on that part. Luckily, I redid it again, used more dye, and these were the results. So always keep in mind how much dye you use, how much water you use, make sure it's hot, make sure your item is moving, constantly turn it so every part of it gets dyed. So keep those tips in mind because you don't want to end up with faded clothes. I had to go back and do it again, but honestly, I'm not mad that I did because I got the results that I wanted. I got to actually see that there is a slight difference between the two. They do work the same when it comes to dyeing everything, like the pouring, the mixing, everything is identical. The only difference would be the end result because everything else was pretty much the same. So obviously different tones when it comes to both of them. I feel like me personally, if I want to make something super dark, like let's say it's a faded black item, I will use the kit right here. I feel like it's just going to make it darker. It's going to be better results in comparison to the regular black one. And then when it comes to like maybe doing tie dye, I will use like the regular black one because that one is like more convenient to get and it won't be as dark and as harsh with the other colors that I'm tie dyeing, you know. So both definitely have their uses. And I will say this right here, the dye fixative surprised me so much because when it comes to dyeing, especially black, you see 
a lot of bleeding after you wash it. This one caused it to not have any. So this one right here, when it comes to dyeing anything, I feel like you need to use this. I never use this and now I feel like I'm going to start to use this because this is a complete game changer. So in the future, if you're dyeing anything, make sure to use this. And I think you could even use this when it comes to tie dyeing. I googled it and I don't think you can like completely dunk like your tie dye into a bucket the way I did in this video with this. I think there's like a spray method that way it like stays more but it might be a little bit different set but I feel like I'm still gonna do it because this thing just straight up like made the dye stay there. I haven't tried washing it again to see if it actually bleeds or not but this right here straight up 10 out of 10 and now I feel like I want to do a battle of this one too like dye something and then use this and then dye something and not use this to see if this actually works. Tell me if that's something you would want to see because I'm curious to see if this actually makes a difference or not. Obviously it did with this one but I just want to see if there's a difference with like other colors and things. So yeah let me know. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and got a better idea on whether you want to use the black or the jet black. So thank you once again for watching. Don't forget to leave me your thoughts in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already and yeah I'll catch you in my next video. Bye.